ADSB is an acronym you'll hear often when talking about avionics or air traffic control. It can be a confusing topic, but it's also a very important one for pilots, so it's worth taking a moment to understand what it means. At heart, ADSB, which stands for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, is really just a new way to manage air traffic. As part of the FAA's next-gen initiative to modernize ATC, it will eventually replace radar as the primary tool for separating aircraft. ADSB is different from radar in that it does not depend on radar sites actively pinging aircraft as they fly. Instead, aircraft equipped with ADSB self-report their position in a networked environment so pilots can see the entire air traffic picture around them. Controllers are still there, but they get more information more quickly and without some of radar's limitations. While ADSB doesn't need radar sites, it does depend on a network of small antennas to receive aircraft reports and send them back to ATC. These ground stations also transmit weather and traffic information back up to properly equipped aircraft. The ADSB network consists of over 700 stations, providing excellent coverage above 3,000 feet AGL to most of the U.S. Now that we know what ADSB is, let's look at how it works. ADSB is made up of two main parts, ADSB out and ADSB in. ADSB out is a surveillance technology for tracking aircraft. It's what ATC needs to manage aircraft. An ADSB out transmitter reports your aircraft's position, velocity, and altitude once per second. This transmission, which is received by ATC and also by nearby aircraft, makes up the equivalent of a radar display. ADSB out will be required to fly in controlled airspace by the year 2020. ADSB in allows an aircraft to receive transmissions from ADSB ground stations and other aircraft. This is how pilots can get subscription free weather and traffic in the cockpit. Adding ADSB in is strictly optional. While it offers some great benefits, the FAA is only concerned about you flying with ADSB out. The free weather and traffic is simply an incentive to upgrade. Note that there are various combinations of these two parts, ADSB out only equipment that simply meets the FAA requirement, ADSB in only portable devices that receive weather, and ADSB in out products that do it all. Since weather and traffic come into play so much during any discussion of ADSB, let's define two more terms, FISB and TISB. These are two products that we can receive via ADSB in. Flight Information Services Broadcast, FISB, is just a fancy name for data link weather. The end product is very similar to what you might be used to seeing with XM Weather. NEXRAD Radar, METARS, TAFs, Air Mets, and other information is continuously updated in flight. And all this can be displayed on either a panel-mounted multifunctional display or a portable device like an iPad. There is no monthly subscription fee with FISB, but unlike XM Weather, it uses the FAA's network of ground stations, not satellites. Traffic Information Services Broadcast, TISB, is what the name suggests, data link traffic. Unlike ADSB Weather, which is broadcast to anyone in range of the ground stations, ADSB Traffic is a custom report that is only sent to aircraft with ADSB out. If you're flying with an ADSB out transmitter in your airplane, you'll get an excellent picture of all traffic within roughly 30 miles of your position. But if you're not flying with an ADSB out transmitter, say with only portable ADSB in receiver, TSB is fairly unreliable. Remember that while data link weather and traffic are nice, the whole point of ADSB is for air traffic management. Since ADSB is so much more accurate than radar, separation minimums can be reduced. This should lead to at least a little more direct routing and some increased capacity. Because ADSB does not require radar, ATC will be available in many remote areas that cannot be served by radar. ADSB will also impact ground operations, giving controllers the ability to prevent runway incursions and ground traffic conflicts. Where do you need ADSB out? In short, anywhere you need a Mode C transponder today. That includes Class A, B, and C airspace, plus Class E airspace above 10,000 feet but not below 2,500 feet. You'll also need ADSB out within 30 miles of large airports, commonly called the Mode C Veil. This ADSB out transmitter must be a panel installed solution that meets FAA performance requirements, and it must include a WASP GPS source as well. Remember, though, there is no mandate for ADSB in equipment. 
Get to know the ADSB system and what kind of equipment you have in the airplanes you fly most. It will be an important part of your flying career and it offers some nice benefits for pilots at any level.